Rhode Island Senator Jack Reed serves on the Armed Services Committee and is a retired Army Ranger and joins me now. Senator, thank you very much for being with us. There's a thank lot to Andrea. unpack here. First of all, the U.S. is now, initially through the CIA, eventually we believe through the Pentagon, going to be arming the Peshmerga forces. But this is a limited part of the problem. Do we, at this point, have to worry about taking on more of the ISIS challenge? And that means going to Syria. Well, I think the first uh, issue is to stabilize the situation in Iraq, and the uh, Peshmerga are very competent fighters uh, with our air cover and also with the uh, more sophisticated equipment which they're receiving. Uh, I believe they'll be able to go and push back uh, ISIS, uh, secure their border. And then the real issue is the one that you've talked about previously, which is uh, the political issue in Baghdad, getting a Iraqi leadership that's uh, both competent and efficient and effective and using that leadership and their military forces to begin to roll back ISIS in Iraq. Senator, I know that U.S. officials were really disturbed by uh, both the tenor and the specifics in Maliki's speech yesterday, last night, when he said that the army was going to defend the Constitution. He's basically deploying armed forces that we help train and, and equip around Baghdad. And that looks like the makings of a potential coup. Well, he is uh, unfortunately staying true to, to form, which he's uh, militarized the politics there. He is now using his forces that appear to be loyal to him and not necessarily to the Iraqi constitution for his own benefit. That's been the problem for, for months, if not years. But the issue, I think, has to be an international message from not just the United States, but from every concerned party, that he's not helping uh, the government of Iraq stabilize the country and not helping his own people, the Shia, to be able to uh, form together with the Sunni and Kurds a, and other minorities a unified country. So I, I sense he's got to go, and um, but he is trying his utmost to, to resist not only his fellow um, parliamentarians, but also the, the will of the international community. Now, the deputy speaker, al Abadi, has been chosen by the Shiite coalition, uh, with the blessing, apparently, of the Ayatollah Sistani, so he is the chosen replacement for Maliki. Uh, what's to stop him from taking power? Maliki and his weapons? Well, and that's the first obstacle, which is that physically sort of just uh, getting Maliki to withdraw from uh, at least the presumption of holding the office. Uh, I think that's best accomplished by the pressure that, uh, again, Sistani, Alitalia, Sistani can bring, others can bring, popular. Uh, but it's uh, interesting that this is the, the, the Shia sort of themselves who are asking for his removal now. And that's a significant step forward. And he has to, I think, listen to that call. And then the pressure, uh, political pressure, has to be brought to bear both within Iraq and internationally to get him to step aside peacefully. Senator, militarily, one of the critical points last week was that the Maliki government, the Iraqi Air Force, had finally done its own air airstrikes in support of the Kurds. We finally had them working together. How can that happen with Maliki now staging this political, uh, you know, runabout? Well, How do we fight ISIS effectively if the Iraqi armed forces are now loyal to Maliki? Well, that's a, a fundamental issue here. If, if, if the armed forces of Iraq are not committed to the nation, uh, but they're committed to an individual politician, then uh, any help we give will be short-term and not decisive. Uh, so the key here is what's going on in Baghdad in terms of and the, the parliament and the parliamentarians and the Sh Shia uh, politicians seem to recognize that. They want him out. Uh, he is holding on. Uh, if he goes, and I hope he does, then I think you have the ability to start uh, organizing and directing the entire national security apparatus of Iraq against ISIS, and that's the first step forward to ultimately uh, being able to prevail. But without that first step, this is a chaotic situation, and you know, ISIS can be pushed back, but it would uh, be very difficult to ultimately defeat. And you know, finally, are we just uh, applying Band-Aids here, even with the, the Kurdish situation in the north? Until you shut that border or go after the, um, their command and control in Syria, how do you really get at ISIS, these fighters are crossing the border? 
Well, I, you're absolutely right. I think first you have to have the political stability to, to give positive direction support to Iraqi's forces. Uh, you have to stabilize the, uh, the situation along the fighting fronts now, but uh, very shortly you have to cut the lines of communication from ISIS back into Syria. And once you cut those lines of communication, then you can bring pressure to bear individually. One of the, the military aspects of this is, uh, as ISIS has been moving with the captured equipment, uh, which we can easily identify from the air, and as they move out of Sunni communities, uh, then the, the, their advantages dissipate. Uh, as they get driven back further into the communities, as they abandon the equipment and go back to their pickup truck, it's a harder target. But uh, your point is well taken. We, if we can cut the lines of communication, uh, significantly stop the flow of men and material across the border, that I think will give the Iraqi security forces uh, the, the kind of, uh, uh, will even the playing field, if you will, and allow them to take the fight to ISIS. Senator, thank you very much. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Andrew.